It is finally time for a Bayern Munich fan to take on this task. This club right now is in second place with 50 points. Eight points behind Xabi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen. And in the round of 16 in the Champions League, Bayern Munich have already lost against Lazio with the second leg yet to come in the month of March. We are looking at a squad that has been winning the Bundesliga for over 10 years, basically. And now Thomas Tuchel has come in and has ruined absolutely everything. If only Chani knew. News just in. FC Bayern and Thomas Tuchel will end their collaboration in the summer. In other unrelated news, Chani's nipples are about to explode all over the place. I know that you might know that I hate him with a passion. I honestly cannot stand the guy. And I have the receipts for it. If we go back to 2017, this is seven years ago, I was already saying, finally, Dortmund got rid of Tuchel, just don't like the guy, took over Klopp's team and didn't change too much, in my opinion, seems arrogant as well. Next tweet, sometime in September, please no Tuchel, hate the guy. Honestly, lads, for me, Tuchel has always been a guy that has just consistently taken over Klopp's teams and has just done maybe a little bit of a decent job. I don't like him. I want him to be gone. <laughs> And for that reason, I'm going to take over the club. And I'm also going to be getting rid of so many players that are apparently wanting moves, that are not happy with their situation. All right, buddy. If you don't like playing at Bayern Munich and you want to move on to a club where you probably will be winning half the trophies, go on then. So we're going to jump into this one. I'm fuming. I need things to change. And Thomas Tuchel, I will celebrate the day that you get fired like it's my birthday. <laughs> So let me instantly give you the rundown on what is happening at Bayern Munich, what are the issues, and what things I personally am absolutely hating. First of all, let's start off with the biggest game of the season. We're playing against Bayer Leverkusen. Xabi Alonso coming up with his 3-4-2-1 formation, which he has been dominating teams with for over 30 games now. And Bayern Munich, instead of trusting into their own qualities, and specifically Thomas Tuchel, the genius has gone ahead and played instead of the original 4-2-3-1 type formation or the 4-3-3 attack type formation that we used to play he has gone ahead and decided you know what oh i'm just gonna go ahead and play three at the back i'm gonna pretend like i'm shabby alonso too and try to counteract their formation by just copying what they're doing oh that worked out well didn't it buddy you went ahead and played a formation that you never played before played Sasha Bowie as a freaking left midfielder or left wing back in a position where he has absolutely zero idea what to do. The guy had just recently joined the team as a right back and all of a sudden you're playing him on the left hand side despite having Mazraoui who is actually capable of playing on the left side who you then proceeded to play as a right wing back. I mean that's what he did and instantly Bayern got smashed. But that's not the only thing. It's not just tactical decisions that he is going ahead and getting wrong consistently. It's also on a character basis where he's failing miserably. Starting off with one of the most important players in the team, which obviously is Joshua Kimmich. This man has been basically one of the most ambitious players in the Bayern squad. Someone that is very similar to Trent Alexander-Arnold in terms of the competitiveness that he has. He does not want to lose. He hates losing more than anything. One of the most ambitious players out there when Bayern go out and play. And he is basically becoming someone that Tuchel has disrespected from minute one. In the summer, he came in and said, oh, we do not have any midfielders that can defend. Basically just outright saying that Kimmich is not able to defend. Now, I do agree, Kimmich is not necessarily just a defensive midfielder. He is someone that takes the ball from defense and starts the attacks with his great passing play moving forward. That is the part of the game where he's really good. It's not someone that you identify with when you're looking at like someone that wins tons of duels, someone that puts in tons of tackles. That is not his strongest part of, it, of his game. But he just consistently undermines him. And now, lately, in just the last game, he has put him onto the bench after like 70 minutes. And Kimmich was on the bench. You could see his face. Please, if there is that picture, Biscuit, put it right there. You can just see how upset he is and how he just can't believe what is going on with the team and his situation as well. So clearly, 
He's undermining one of the most important characters in the team, a future captain of Bayern Munich, who's now being linked with moves away to like Barcelona, Liverpool and stuff like that. And that's not all. We're going to the centre-back position and you can see Kim Min Jae and Upamecano playing. No disrespect to Upamecano, he does have some games where he looks absolutely world-class. But before Kim came in, De Ligt was the man. This guy was the fans' favourite. He was the one that just came in from Juventus and all of a sudden played for the club as, he, as if he never played for any other club. He was basically bleeding for the badge, giving it all, and consistently the fans were praising him for his performances on the pitch and also on the side. In interviews, after games, he was consistently the one stepping up. Even though he was new to the team, he was capable of going out there and basically transmitting the ideas of the team to the fans in interviews. And people were loving this guy. And what's happening now? He sat on the bench. He bought freaking Eric Dyer. I'm sorry, but please, Bayern Munich is like a world-class club and you're bringing in Eric Dyer to be Harry Kane's puppy dog into the team. And you're putting someone like De Ligt onto the bench for him already. I mean, uh, you're nuts. You're just nuts, man. I, I, I can't. I can't believe this guy is part of Bayern Munich. Honestly, it is shocking. But yeah, there are so many things that he's consistently getting wrong. And Bayern Munich fans are screaming for Pavlovic to start playing so many more games. This kid was a ball boy for Bayern Munich and now is a starter for them whenever he can get that opportunity, obviously, which sadly isn't given to him often enough. And someone like Matisse Tell, Bayern Munich fans love him. He is someone... And every time he comes onto the pitch, just gives it his all. Like 100, 120%. Every time he comes on, he does exactly that. And that's not all he's doing. It's not just on the pitch. It's him also going out, his, out of his way and learning German in record time. I'm telling you right now, bro. German is such a tough language to learn. And this kid has gone out there and learned it so quickly that he was already given interviews in German within just months time. And it just shows how much he already identifies with the club. Despite so many rumors linking him away from the club, he has consistently come out and said how much he loves the team, how much he wants to become a legend at a club like Bayern Munich. He is just willing to give it his all, but it's just not happening because this coach is just brain dead. When players like Kingsley Coman and Nabri are injured, and you have a position open on the wings, rather than playing someone like Thomas Müller in there, which I highly respect him, don't get me wrong, but if you want to go ahead and create positions where you're getting past one person and all of a sudden you're through on goal and you just need to play one more pass to get things done or even take shots yourself, Matisse Tell is the guy. And these are just a few of the issues that I'm mentioning. There are tons of injuries that are also plaguing the team consistently, which obviously doesn't help, but it seems like wrong decisions have been made even despite the injuries. You're lacking a right back, you're playing, you're bringing in Sasha Bowie, first game in, in the starting 11, you play him as a left wing back. I mean, yeah, that's all I'm going to say for the introduction of today's rebuild. As you can tell, I'm very heated when it comes to this topic. And I just want to get things right now. All right, lads. I've started the rebuild with Goretzka leaving the squad for 65.4 million. Now, no disrespect against Goretzka, but I just don't feel like he fits what the team requires right now. If you want to get the best out of Joshua Kimmich, you need someone next to him who does all the defensive work. The tackling, the duels won, in the air. Ideally, you need someone who's tall and physical. So Goretzka being more like a number eight, it just doesn't fit. And I think a lot of people are aware of it. At this past weekend, instead of Kimmich coming off, most people were screaming at Tuchel for not taking Goretzka off because he actually took Kimmich off, moved Musiala into the sixth position or eight, whatever you want to call it, really. And then Musiala constantly lost the ball in that midfield because he always tries to get past people with dribbles and it led to multiple attacks. So rather than taking someone like uh, uh, someone like Kimmich off, he should have taken off the guy who was a bit more offensive. That would have been the ideal situation. Having Kimmich there, it could have uh, required uh, put in some cover for someone like Musiala to actually do those dribbles. But with Goretzka being an offensive type player as well, it just doesn't work. So I'm going to let him go. 65.4 million. Alfonso Davies, I'm sick. 
I love Alfonso. I really like him a lot. But this whole stuff about this agent and him constantly being linked to Real Madrid, it's doing my head in. So, Alfonso, just go. Just go and do your thing. He could be Alaba 2.0 for Bayern Munich. So, yeah, good luck at Real Madrid at some point. You're going off to Aston Villa at first. Serge Gnabry, no real disrespect here. I just feel like with Matisse Tell being there and Gnabry constantly getting injured, we don't need Nabri here. And obviously, Kingsley Coman gets injured too. But now Bayern have Brian Zaragoza, who has joined them in the January transfer window instead of the summer transfer window as well. So I'm going to put some faith in those younger players. So those are gone. Bunasar is gone. Pavlovic out on loan because I do want this guy to be the main man. In my opinion, he's the perfect midfielder for Bayern Munich right now. He does defense, he does offense, and he does it all so well at such a young age. And the fans identify with this player already and they want him to get starting playtime, just like Matisse Tell. And then we have loaned out a couple more players. Tarek Buchmann is a big talent as well. Uh, Daniel Perez has gone out on loan to Inter Miami. Good luck playing with Messi. Maybe those training sessions of Messi taking shots will help him. Kretzik, who actually in real life has been loaned out to the Austrian League and also got a goal and an assist already, he is going to Heidenheim on loan as well. So with all those things done, we need to now work on the players to arrive at the club. I'm starting off our journey by signing a CDM. Someone that does defending at its best. But someone that has been injured for a while now. This is Guido Rodriguez from Real Betis. And if you guys haven't paid any attention to him, he's actually one of the strongest number sixes, basically, you can say in European football. Someone that doesn't get enough recognition reminds me a lot of like someone like a Fabinho, for example. So Guido Rodriguez is going to be joining us to become that number eight, a uh, number six next to Kimmich. The reason behind it, 85 defending, 80 physicality. The Real Betis midfielder is also, as you know, Spanish. So we would assume he has some really good passing play on him. Obviously, Rodri would be the perfect solution, but that's not going to happen. So I'm going to go for Rodriguez. And he's going to be joining us as a left-sided CDM for our side to allow Kimmich to do all the things he wants to do moving forward. And with that being said... I also will be playing De Ligt in the centre-back position. De Ligt and Kim Min Jae just sounds like an incredible partnership to me. Don't get me wrong, Upamecano is a very good and still young player, but he does have a ton of mistakes in him and I want something stable at the back. So I feel like this is the way to go. But having let go of Alfonso Davies and also lacking real strength in both full-back positions, there are some decisions to be made. Actually, for the right back position, I'm going to trust Sasha Boy because I've said it before, before he even joined Bayern Munich, and a lot of you guys tagged me in the posts as well, saying that I wanted Sasha Boy at Bayern as the new right back, and that's what I want to go for. So I'm going to let go of Mazraoui. I'm putting him onto the transfer list because the biggest mistake that Bayern Munich has made this season was letting go Josip Stanisic to buy Leverkusen, where he has been crushing it any time he gets a chance. So he's going to be returning into the squad at some point to be the backup to someone like Bowie, but also to be a backup to our centre-backs, because obviously we can't just have Upamecano being the only backup there. So with that situation being solved, it's only the left-back position that we need to figure out. Is Rafa Guerrero someone I want to have at left-back? Or is he someone that I want to have as a, a backup to my midfielders? Because he has been playing as the 6 or even the 8 Borussia Dortmund before he jo uh, joined Bayern Munich and he looked amazing there. The thing is, there aren't that many left backs in world football right now that excite me. And I have to say Miguel Gutierrez from Girona is probably one of them. Someone that really fits the modern style of play where... Coaches want to have fullbacks that they can actually utilize as people pushing into the center of the pitch as well, invert, so to say. And Miguel Gutierrez has been doing that on an extremely high level for Girona. And he's going to be the perfect solution here. So we do have Guerrero, who's 29 years old, who can, who can still grow. And we will now have Gutierrez as well, who can obviously become a starter for this team. But most importantly, be an amazing backup for that position for us. So I think that's the right decision to make. Miguel Gutierrez has been very impressive in La Liga. Even though lately the results for Girona haven't been great, I still do have a lot of faith in this man for this team. And yes, 
that is basically me done for the first season right here. This is the lineup that I'll be rocking. But obviously, if a uh, if Kingsley Coman is fit, he is the one that I choose. In my opinion, one of the biggest reasons as to why Bayern has been struggling so much lately is because Kingsley Coman wasn't there to get past that first line of defense with his incredible dribbling. His injury has caused so much heartache to this Bayern Munich squad. People just aren't realizing it. So let's take a look at how the team has performed in my first season over here. Well, take a look at that. 75 points, first place. Borussia Mönchengladbach in second, which is surprising. Dortmund third, Union Berlin fourth, and then it's Leverkusen and Leipzig. Huge shocker, really, to see Leverkusen drop out of the top four there. But nice to see Union Berlin up there. So Bayern Munich continue to win the Bundesliga the way it should be. I mean, just today, I was watching the Bayern Munich uh, documentary that is on Amazon Prime, I believe. And it's just amazing to see what type of mentality is within the club. It's honestly, it's all about winning. You have to win. There is no way around it. It's not like they don't take it serious. It's not like these guys think, oh, these guys, these opponents are too easy to play against. No, no, they know it's not easy, but they have to get it done season after season. That is what the expectation level is at Bayern Munich. So I'm glad that I was able to continue that. My goal is going to be to win the league title every single year as we are building a beautiful squad where Rodriguez has gone up to an 85. That is a bit unexpected, but I love it. He's 29 years old now. The reason why I brought him into the team is that I want to give Pavlovich plenty of time to go high enough rating to come into this team at some point. And I wanted to get someone in that can be good enough for a couple of years. And Rodriguez is exactly that. So he has helped us out. And look at the defensive pairing. Kim in J86, they lift 88. Lovely stuff. And then we have Gutierrez already up to an 81. Going to be competing with Guerrero for that left back position in the upcoming season. Who now is 30 years old. Sasha Bowie looking solid with that 82. And then obviously Upamecano hasn't played too many games. But seems to be quite happy with this situation. If he goes higher rating than Kim Min Jae, go ahead and take over that position, buddy. I do not mind that. But Jamal Musiala is becoming world class as we speak. And that is going to be an important one, too. I love watching him play. Honestly, I miss the type of players that you would turn games on for just to see them play. Like back in the day, I would do that with Ronaldinho all the time. I would love to watch Barcelona games just because I knew something great was about to happen. And I have that feeling again with Jamal Musiala. I'm not saying he's Ronaldinho. I'm just saying that it's a joy to watch him play. The way he dribbles past people. The way he takes risks. I like that a lot about him. So that's a big one for me there. But moving on, we still have Harry Kane on that 90. And I assume he has gotten the most goal contributions. Of course, he has 30 goals and 9 assists. He started off so well into the season for Bayern Munich. And now things have slowed down a little bit. And I think it's down to not necessarily him, but the fact that the team is just not able to find him in the right spaces lately. And the team overall struggling. But Jamal coming up as the second best player this season. Zaragoza returning next season. Kretzik coming back. So many players are going to be coming back into this team, which I'm really excited about. And uh, yeah, let's get into season two. And let's work our way the Champions League now. So let's dive into this season's issues that we need to address. I personally think Manu Anoya is fine to play multiple seasons going ahead, but he has already dropped down to an 84 rating, so I'm going to let him go and play one last season somewhere else. Let's just pretend he has retired at the club. Guerrero, I'm going to let go because I do want to give that play time to someone like Gutierrez and also Konrad Leimer is going to be leaving as he has pulled his hamstring in the squad. Nubel could be the new Manuel Noya, but I don't think it's going to happen. There have been too many issues in the past, and I personally don't think he's going to be the guy for this team, especially considering his age and everything. I think Bayern would love to have the next Manuel Noya, someone that is going to be here for years to come. So I'm going to let him go. And Thomas Müller, he's down to a 79. I just cannot sell him. The same actually goes for Manuel Neuer, but I probably have to sell him so that the other goalkeeper that comes in gets playtime. But Thomas Müller, I can't sell. Yeah, I'm just going to let this man retire at the club. Probably one of my favorite players of all time when it comes to Bayern Munich. Just his character is insane. So yeah, we have a lot of players coming back though. 
Tillman is finally back here at Bayern Munich. He has proven in multiple divisions. He, uh, he has gone ahead and played in the Scottish League for Rangers, I believe, where he did well. And then he's gone over to PSV now, where at times he does showcase incredible skills. And uh, Stanisic is back now, which is very important as well for our defense. And uh, yeah, who's going to be that goalkeeper? Who is the one? Initially, the most exciting young goalkeeper out there used to be Diogo Costa from Porto. But in the same division, one man has come in that has impressed me so much within just a short amount of time that he's been there already. Former Shatya Donetsk and current Benfica goalkeeper Anatoly Trubin is going to be joining us. This man could be here for years and years to come. I truly believe that he is the number one best young goalkeeper, at least in the top three of that list. When we're currently looking at goalkeepers out there in world football under 23, he has to be in that list for me. So I am putting him in into that goalkeeping position and I will build up Anadoli Trubin. And I don't even know if I need to. He just looks so freaking good at Benfica already. And I just cannot wait to see what he can become. I assume Benfica is going to sell him for a lot of money. Some big club is going to sign him and hold on to him for years and years. And I honestly wouldn't mind if that turned out to be Bayern Munich. So you, my friends, can become my new Manuel Neuer. I'm trying to make sure that our midfield remains strong for years to come. So I am signing Lucia Gume, who has gone ahead and left Inter right now, John Sevilla. But I want him to be a backup midfielder for us because I am looking to move on Konrad Lima or Connie as they call him. Nothing against him, really. Honestly, he's a decent little player. He's a great squad player. But I want to give people like Agume a chance. I think they would be happier to just be part of the project rather than Lima, who probably is looking to get some playtime. The thing is, he can get some playtime. I might even keep him, to be fair. But yeah, I just wanted to bring in another midfielder, another defensive one into the team as Pavlovic has still not returned, which he will do at some point and ideally play right there. Season two comes to an end. And as you can see, Bayern Munich dominate the way it's supposed to be. A 10 point gap to Borussia Dortmund, letting them know who's boss. And that is necessary. Now, sadly, in Champions League football, we got kicked out by freaking Arsenal. And that is definitely something that we will have to address as we move forward. Now, I am fully aware it probably is down to the fact that we did bring in a low-rated goalkeeper. And, oh, I just realized something very important. I haven't done anything when it comes to the team strategy. Nothing. This affects growth and everything. Oh boy, next season is going to be insane. But let's go ahead and take a look at the stats right here of this squad so far. Sane and Kane both on 22 goals. Jamal with 20 and 11. Exceptional stuff. Gone up to a 93. Kingsley come on an 88. And I got to say, I am not against... Getting to a point where in this rebuild, we will have players like Kingsley Coman, Harry Kane and Leroy Sané leaving the team and replacing them with new players there. I'm completely open to that idea if we make it that far. So let's see what happens down the line here. But pretty impressive. The squad itself is looking solid. The new players that we have brought in into the left back and the goalkeeping position are trying to adjust to the level that is required. And that clearly will help us if we go ahead and try and get that Champions League trophy finally. My ultimate goal is to win the treble. German Cup, Bundesliga and the Champions League in the same season. The season has finished and as usual, we are ahead of Dortmund. But this time, it's 16 points. That's what I call domination. Amazing stuff. And we have won the German Cup. Now, you might be asking yourself, OK, you got the double. Is there a chance for a treble? But let me show you, my friends. Champions League football. We're not part of it. Semi-finals, freaking AS Monaco kicked us out. So this journey is not done yet. We need to get to that spot and it needs to happen very, very soon because players like Harry Kane are getting onto the older side. Harry Kane, now 32 years old, has to rely even more on Mati Stel to come in and do a good job, which I'm excited about. And also Pavlovic has returned into our team and has grown to an 80 rating, which is amazing. So I'm very excited about him coming in here potentially being a great backup to the likes of Kimmich, who is also 31, and Rodriguez, who is 31 as well. So you can clearly tell 
that this Byron squad, with the additions that we have brought in, there is already some transitioning going on with the youngsters that we have brought in, but then also some of these players are getting older, so Bayern doesn't only need to think about what's happening now, they need to think about what's going to happen in the upcoming years when they have to replace players like Harry Kane in a couple of years' time because they're just not on that level anymore for them to be able to dominate things as well. So, yeah, an interesting thing to say the least. And we have Harry Kane with the most goals, Miro Sane, Kingsley come on helping out, and Kimmich getting involved as well. But I need that treble to finish this project. The end of the season has come, and it's a battle between Bayern and Dortmund in the final for the German Cup. I don't even know if we have an opportunity to win the Bundesliga as well, but this is the first trophy we could be securing. So here we go. Is it going to be working out with our team? Yes, it is. Kingsley Coman, De Ligt, and again, it's De Ligt. See what happens when you trust him. See Tuchel. Here we go. That's a trophy won thanks to an incredible performance from a centre-back. So, let's take a look at the rest. Is there a chance for a treble? We are part of the Champions League final due to smashing Napoli 6-2 on aggregate against Inter will be playing but the Bundesliga title is that working out too yes it is let's go all right it's time to achieve greatness only two losses this season Dortmund in second and our team looks like this Harry Kane Jamal Musiala then we have the likes of Sané and Coman still, so all originals, but we just supplied this team with a beast of a CDM. I know a lot of people will not know about him, but trust me, this guy's class. And then we have Gutierrez up to a 91, Bowie on an 88, really like the fullbacks. And then we have De Ligt and Kim Min Jae in the center. Upamecano has just become a backup, which probably turns into an issue down the line somewhere. He probably will want to leave if that ever happens. Rubin on an 89, the best young goalkeeper in world football, in my opinion. And I got to show you something. This right here was my last rebuild of Bayern Munich. Kolomwani up top. I did bring in Palinia back in the day. And I didn't change much in the back line. And I think he, I even was playing Manuel Neuer in goal at that point. And then the rebuild after that, we had this team right here. Where I had Harry Kane up top, but Martinelli on the left. Serge Gnabry was still part of my team. Pogba somehow was part of this team, which is nuts. That is such a bad pairing. And then we still had Mazraoui and Alfonso Davies. And then Kobe in goal. So... Things have definitely changed and I have to say, I think I like this team the most because it still has so many parts of what makes Bayern Bayern right now and the best players are still here and it just added the missing pieces in here, especially that goalkeeping spot down the line could be huge. The left back position with Alfonso Davies leaving, Mazraoui not being part of the starting 11 anymore. And then obviously players like Matisse Tell getting that trust down the line. After this season, he would have probably become my number one striker in this team. So good for Harry Kane that we actually managed to get it done now. He has 46 goal contributions. Coman with 23 and 15. Sané 21 and 4. Musiala 11 and 13. Matisse Tell with 8 goals in nine ma 19 matches off the bench. That's what I like to see. I'm definitely going to be subbing him on against that inter side now let me see that inter side because this is an interesting matchup right here <clears throat> as we speak i think today champions league is going to be played and who's playing inter i completely forgot who was playing inter hold on a second your boy has to do so oh atletico madrid that's going to be an interesting match i'm definitely going to be watching that and then psv against Dortmund is happening as well so some really good stuff out there tonight and I'm going to be enjoying every single bit of it. But Inter is coming through with the likes of Nicholas Jackson instead of Turam. Sergei Milinkovic Savic back in Serie A. And then Merino is there. Dino Gittins, Mason Greenwood. All right, buddy. Uh, be prepared for a little bit of a slight tackle coming your way. And off we go. Inter, Lautaro. Man, what a player. By the way, a lot of people need to talk uh, need to talk more about Inter, man. They have been very impressive this year. And I really like the team that they have built. I wonder if they can hold on to it or if some pieces will be falling apart. What the hell is going on here? That's a good run. Big save by Trubin. Needed that. First chance belongs to Inter. Musiala, nice pickup of the ball there. 
Now using his technical ability to find Joshua Kimmich. That was not bad. Kim wins that easily. Finds Kimmich as well. Into Harry Kane. There's some movement here. Down the right with Sasha Bowie. Cross to the far post. I see you, Musiala. Huh. Interesting attempt. Oh, that's a run and a half down the wing. Keeper. Easily. What are you doing, mate? Down the left, we now have space with Kingsley Coman. A great throw coming in from Trubin. And an even better run from Harry Kane, who can definitely finish this for Bayern Munich. Oh my god, what a save by Jordan Pickford. Rodriguez, two-footing Mason Greenwood. Sorry, pal, didn't see you there. But Inter are still making their run down the wing, which we stop now. Good stuff. Yellow card, totally worth it. And let's enjoy that moment one more time. Great stuff. Oh my god, it's an own goal. It's an own goal. You gotta be kidding. It bounces off one of our players. It is Lautaro Martinez with the header. Look at that. I can't believe it. It's actually a Greenwood assist as well. <laughs> Oh, well. It's Lautaro pushing into the center. Kim Min Jae with a huge steal. And there is a lot of room down this left-hand side now. Which Kingsley Coman will obviously run into. He will cut back inside. Find Jamal Musiala. Jamal. Finds Harry Kane or someone else. Oh, please. We gotta be scoring that. And yes, we do. Kingsley Coman leaps up and scores for Bayern Munich. Oh, that's an interesting celebration. I've never seen that one before. That's a cool one. Kim and Jay does not lose that battle. See, that's what happens. Harry Kane. Come on. Kimmich. This is amazing. Musiala and Sané in a good position. And Sané finishing it off. Straight after kickoff. Here we go, my friends. Bayern is dominating again. Ah, oh, how I miss these days. Honestly. Even though I hate Tuchel and I would love for him to get fired. <laughs> I want them to get past Lazio, man. I really do. And actually, by March, he might be fired. So since the Bundesliga is basically done already, maybe we lose the next game against Leipzig and then he gets fired. I wouldn't mind. Down the left, he runs again. Ah, not this time, pal. Not this time. You had your moment. Now sit down and watch what Kingsley Coman and the boys can do. Kimmich. Oh my god, what a freaking pass that was. Musiala. Come on. He's inside the box. He's going to cut in. Find Musiala into Sané. No worries. I still have the ball. Down to the right. Sasha Bowie. Inside. Musiala. Lobs it up. Could have hit it. I don't know what the hell is going on inside the box there again. Sané brings it back. Kimmich. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's go, dude. What an odd goal that was. Honestly, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing here. But it's working out. And honestly, nothing else matters. This is what you get with Sasha Bowie. Pace. Harry Kane. Precision. Jamal Musiala. Red card, ref. Come on now. Give him the red. Get out of here, pal. There we go. Oh, yes. This is beautiful. Gutierrez, nice little opening for Jamal Musiala. 4-1 it is in the end. In the 19th minute, we're sending Inter back home. You might be decent in real life, but this team that we have built here is just too good for you. So there he is, the captain. One of the most ambitious players and one of the ones that just puts so much emotion into the game of football. Kimmich is going to lift that trophy. You should never think about leaving Bayern Munich, pal. No other team should be an option for you. This is your squad. That is your trophy. And we have won a treble with it. Thank you very much, guys, for watching this one. It, I just needed some place where I can vent about the issues of Bayern Munich lately. And my hatred for Thomas Tuchel. Can't leave it inside, you know? You got to let the emotion out. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Take care. And peace.